If you're um, an indispensable piece of equipment in the kitchen, what would you uh, not live without? I'm th I was trying to go through the light bulb moments, and I was just sort yeah. of... For um, somebody I, who's yeah, just I mean, starting out and using ad hoc, uh, uh, the cookbook, and... What would well, I think there, there, are, there are a lot of things. I mean, you know, certainly knife, a knife comes to mind, a spoon comes to mind, a palette knife comes to mind. Um, now you don't like tongs. Forget the tongs. Forget, forget the tongs. tongs. Um, You're not you know, a tong guy. I, I think equipment, you know, when you think about cooking, it's an equation. You know, and, and I've said this a couple of times today because I've been interviewed a couple of times. Um, but I always stress this, is that it's, it's a very simple equation. It's about product and execution. Does everybody agree with that? No matter what level you're at. French laundry, it's, you know, it's about product and execution. And ad hoc, it's about product and execution. Um, we all know what the product is. You know, it's the raw, the raw ingredients. It's, it's the artichokes, it's the proteins, it's the, you know, all those things that we can go out and buy, the butter, the cream. Um, the execution, of course, is, 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 has, has several elements involved in that. Um, and, and that's, you know, number one, your skill. I mean, that's part of, part of what execution is about, it's your ability to execute. But, but, but right along with that is equipment. You know, we think about, you know, you think about equipment, pots and pans, knives, um, Stoves, you know, what's, what's your heat, so heat source? Is it gas? Is it electric? Is it propane? Is it, is it, is it um, um, uh, induction? You know, uh, who, who knows? Uh, all these things are really, really important in being able to execute a dish correctly uh, as, having, as, having, as having great equipment and great skills. Um, now, of course, if, if you don't have good ingredients, I don't care what kind of equipment, what kind of skills you have, um, the, the food is going gonna, is gonna to really represent the quality of the ingredients. So it's really up to you as a chef uh, or a consumer to really continue to resource better and better and better and better ingredients, right? I mean, you, I, I, it's hard for me to speak about Canada because I'm not really that familiar with it, but I see what's happened in America and I can only think that the same thing's happened here. In my lifetime in 30 years, 30 years, no, I wish I was 30 years old, but my, my, in, in, my, in my career the past 30, 35 years, seeing what was available when I started cooking and what's available to now, it's just extraordinary what we have available to us, the quality of the ingredients, uh, the, vers the, 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 the versatility of the, the ingredients, the, um, the variety that we, that we have to deal with right now, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, so, so resourcing, and, that, and, that, and most of that comes from chefs. You know, all, all this trickles down to the consumer in the grocery store because chefs want better products uh, and, and consumers are going to restaurants and saying, wow, he has arugula and goes to the market and says, well, where can I get arugula from? And then the guy goes out and buys arugula and all of a sudden you have arugula in the grocery store. But the quality of the ingredients are really up to you in making sure that you continue to ask for better and better ingredients. And, and, and it's difficult, and, you know, and it's, it's really kind of an elitist approach um, uh, because it really comes down to, to money. At the end of the day, it's always about money. And if you're willing to support the, the, the artisanal products and the artisans and the, 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 the small farms, I mean, the, the, their, their food costs a little more, does it not? I mean, the big, the big con agribusinesses, you know, are, are producing large quantities of food and being able to sell it cheap. It's, it, but it's, the quality is not there. So we really have to be able to support um, our, our farmers, our, our, our suppliers, and we can only support them by buying their products, and sometimes buying their products costs a little more. The last thing I do, and I don't even do it, it's not, I, don't, I don't get involved, is asking my, my suppliers how much something costs. It doesn't come into the equation. It's, it shouldn't come into the equation. Because really, I should be willing to pay for, for, for extraordinary quality if, they're willing to, if they can produce it, right? I mean, it's not, it's not give me the best and let me pay the least for it. I mean, that doesn't work. It never has. Um, so, uh, when you think about what food represents today, and, and you talk about the Bonnery Bay Aquarium and, and, and the, the Seafood Watch and all these different things and sustainability, it, it is somewhat of an elitist attitude. Um, and I support all these things, and we try to, to, to respect sustainability, we try to make sure that we're, we're, we're buying responsibly and doing all these things that we should be doing now, um, but it costs more. It can always cost more. A bit of people start locally and then say, okay, I can't buy locally, especially in a climate like ours, then they can buy regionally and then regionally and then nationally. I think it, it does start. I mean, you're blessed with California, but you've also yeah, got New York, which is yeah. not uh, that much warmer. Um, no. But no. when you're at home, what kind of a chef are you? It was funny. Just as I was at, we, were, we were in this store up here on the corner. What's the name of it? It begins with a P. Pusateris. Pusateris. And, and, and there was a woman in there buying peaches. And I'm saying to her, I, I, I couldn't believe it that I saw peaches there in November. And she's like, 
she's picking these things up and they're almost dehydrated because there, there's no moisture in them. Um, and they don't smell like anything. And, and, and I said, don't buy those peaches. And, <laughs> and, and I said, smell it, it doesn't smell like anything. And of course she wanted peaches and she bought them. And then as I was leaving, I walked by her. Where is she? She's buying cherries. I mean, it's like, <laughs> Chili cherries, I mean, they're from Chile. It's like, why, why are you buying cherries and peaches in November? Um, you know, it's, it's the same old thing, you know, if you have it, they'll buy it, um, no matter what the quality is. I think we have to kind of change the way we think about things. Well, simplicity is hard to do. I mean, if, if you don't have as much available, but you have the best. There, there was like 12 varieties of apples. I mean, just yeah. beautiful oh apples. God. I mean, there's apples everywhere. It's like, this is apple season, why? And we have terrific apples. Pears, apples, I mean, yeah. why aren't you buying pears and apples? Yeah. You know?